Hello everyone. In this episode, I'd like to show you how to use a script called Animorph. It's been around for a few years and I've mentioned it first five or six years ago in uh, two episodes in which I'm explaining how to bring in DAS animations into Marvelous Designer, animate a garment and then bring it back. And that script can be used for that, but it can also be used for any other project that exports an OBJ sequence that we can't natively import into DAS Studio. So an OBJ sequence is like an animation, but rather than having, imagine it to be frames, but at every frame we have a different object. And so if you had a ball that deflates over the course of 30 frames. You essentially have 30 balls that go from all the way inflated to all the way deflated over the course of 30 frames. That's an OBJ sequence, a regular wavefront OBJ file format, but it's just a lot of them. And Marvelous Designer can export that. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with a little example that I've built here. In fact, in a recent stream. So this is what I'm using here. This is a little rubber boat that I've made out of pieces of fabric here. And if I head over to my animations tab, you can see that I've animated this being deflated over the course of say 200 frames here. And Marvelous Designer can indeed export this data as an OBJ sequence. So I've already done it, but just in case if you need a refresher, if you want to bring in garments, animated garments from Marvelous Designer or from Clo, you head over here to File, and then you head over to Export, and then at the bottom here you have the OBJ sequence. That is, can you see that here? This is the one. This is the thing that we need to select. And then the regular export dialog comes up, and I've already done it, so I've ended up with 200 OBJ files here and one material file. And that's an OBJ sequence. So they're fairly large per object and DAS Studio can not natively grab all of them and turn them into an animation. But the script here and the combination of the script and Morph Loader can do it. So you need something like that. And then we'll head over to DAS Studio in a moment. Before we do that, we need to have a copy of this script here. I haven't written this, but I'm hosting it on my GitHub page and I've kind of turned it into an easy to use product, if you will. It tells you a little bit about this. There's a link in the description of this video. There's also links to written articles that describe the uh, DAS to Marvelous Designer and back to DAS kind of process. It tells you a little bit of how it works and who's made it. It's in fact it, uh, Dreadmark and Marcus Wilm. Thank you so much, guys, for putting that together many years ago. And the original sources of the script have kind of, you know, gone lost. But uh, yes, there we go. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to preserve this for future generations. So in the usage instructions down here, you get a link to download the latest version and it tells you what the steps are. I'm just telling you in this video as well. You click on this and then this little dialog here opens that lets you download a zip file that we need. So let's go and do that. I have already installed it, but once you've done it, you can find that here and then literally open the containing folder. And in order to install it, you essentially extract it and copy all of this into your DAS Studios scripts folder. So just to do this step by step that we're all on the same page, here, you right click on this if you're on Windows, you say extract all, and then you navigate to your DAS library, the wherever that is. So the default installation is in fact on the C drive. So I'm going to show you where that is. Uh, mine is on, this is the default actually. It's under C, it's under users then there's public, then there's public documents, and in it I have my DAS 3D library. But yours may be on a different drive, so this is just the default thing. So you double click that, and then you have a look for a folder called scripts. And that is where you're gonna, you're gonna select that, and then you're gonna go and extract everything into this. So I've already done it. I've got my folder here. It's one folder that's called Animorph, and in it we can find, well, there's, there's some files in here. I'm gonna show you in a moment. But do that first, and then you can go ahead and uh, start DAS Studio. I always recommend you install stuff when DAS Studio is not loaded. This is what it'll eventually look like. This is my DAS Studio 4.14. On the content library tab, whoops, just closed it there. It doesn't show up under smart content, so make sure you have the content library tab shown. And in it, you navigate over to my DAS 3D library, or DAS 3D formats rather, my DAS 3D library, and this is essentially the same folder structure you've seen in Windows Explorer. Then under scripts, you can find something like Animorph here, and when you select that, you see all these bits and pieces in here. 
So once a license, if you double click that, you get to see the, the Creative Commons license under which we've released that. And then there's also instructions, which essentially displays a link in your browser to where the repository is from. And then you see three icons here. They are for different versions of Das Studio. So 4.12 and 14, they're exactly the same. I just made these for clarity that if you're running 4.12, use this script. If you're using 4.11, use this. If you're using 4.14, use this. With those scripts in place, let's go and bring in our OBJ sequence. So this is kind of it's kind of an interesting thing that you have to do there. First of all, you have to bring in the first OBJ in the sequence. And just like you bring in any other regular OBJ. So under File, Import, you pick the first one. I've got my bolt sequence here, so I'm going to pick the first one and open that. Depending on how you've saved that. So mine was just the regular DAS Studio scale. I'll bring that in. And it looks like... Well, it looks like a bit of a mess, but that is because the boat is deflated right now. <laughs> so uh, make sure you select the object that you've imported, the first frame of the OBJ sequence. Maybe you should make sure you select that in the scene tab. And then you're going to have to bring in the rest of the OBJs, but not as OBJs, but as morph targets. So Das Studio has a built-in tool for that called the Morph Loader. And it's important that you select this and head over to Edit. Object, Morph Loader Pro. Advanced will also work. We're using Pro. Click that and then another little dialog opens up here that lets you select other OBJs that will become a morph on this OBJ that you've selected. So a morph target is a thing that doesn't describe the object. It just describes changes from an object. So essentially, if you have a character morph, the geometry is the same. It's just the position of the vertices is different. And that is described in the morph target. So we can bring in another OBJ to create such morph targets. And that is what we're doing here with Morph Loader Pro. So under here, under the presets, you pick none. You say, choose morph files. And then you go and navigate to the rest of your OBJ sequence in which you're now going to, in fact, select all of them, except for the first one, because we've already brought that in. So I'm going to select the second one, scroll all the way down until I find the end of my OBJ sequence, and then I'm going to hold down Shift and select the last one so that basically all of them are selected, except for the very first one, because that's already here. And then I'm going to select Open. That shows them all in this list, and I'm going to hit Accept. And that now creates essentially one morph in my current object for every of these OBJs. So we're not really importing the OBJs as geometry. We're just looking at what's changed from the first frame and we're importing those changes. That'll take a moment. And that, of course, depends on how many images are in your sequence. But if you're lucky, then at the end, you're going to see this really long list of status messages. And it essentially says, hey, I was successful importing this for every single OBJ in the sequence. Created morph successfully for every single one of them. That is great. Now, you don't see anything just yet, even in your timeline. If I open that up, there's really no animation in here. But if you were to still select your OBJ and head over to the parameters tab, under morphs, you can now see that the morph loader has created a single slider for literally every frame. And if I were to crank one up to 100%, it'll describe how that one frame is going to look like at that frame. So at frame 87, this is what my boat's going to look like. At frame, I don't know, the 157 is going to look like this. So it changes position and it changes all the vertices. And uh, yes, at the final frame, it'll look like this. So that DAS Studio can do natively already. But what it can't do is essentially say on frame one, we want slider one to be at 100%. On frame two, we want slider two to be at 100% and so forth and set a keyframe essentially for all of these things in the timeline. And that's why we need this Animorph script. That is why that is so clever because it essentially makes that happen. So with all these morphs in our object, we're going to go over to the content library tab and have a look at our scripts here. With our thingy still selected here, our object, I'm going to go and double click the Animorph version that is appropriate for my version of DAS Studio. So in my case, it's 4.14. Double click that. 
don't judge it by the colors on this dialogue. I don't think any of us knows how to change that or how to take these weirdo characters out there. Sorry about that. None of us are real programmers or know anything about that scripting, but it works. I can assure you that. So this is essentially the proceed button and this is the cancel button. So it says, if you are sure that you've imported all your morph targets, head over and hit accept. And that is exactly what we're going to do. And then we're going to wait a second, literally a second, and that has now done that. So in the timeline, you can see that these all these little triangles here, they're individual keyframes at every frame. And each of them is now set so that a morph slider changes. And as a result, if I go ahead and left click and drag on my playhead here, I can now see that I have an animation. That's cool. Let me go and switch this to looping and just uh, play back. And then I can see that my boat now inflates. That is why that script is so clever. That is essentially what it does. It totally wasn't set on, on loop. There we go. So none of the materials will be included in this. I mean, there will be one material, which is the, the default thing that you get with an OBJ import. So it'll have the diffuse texture, but it won't have any of the materials. So you're going to have to export those manually and set them up as a, as a shader or as material presets in Das Studio. But that is essentially how you get the animation from Marvelous Designer or in fact any program that supports an OBJ sequence on export. That is how you get that into Das Studio. I hope this helps. I'm going to go and include this video on the GitHub repository. If you have any questions, please leave them below here in the comments or open an issue on GitHub. If you have any questions, I'll be here for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.